Welcome back. We're in our next phase of the 3D modeling software program. Um, as you saw, we got a rotating model of what we're going to try to produce tonight. Um, in this, we've got our orthographic view and it's got some dimensions on here, but really no tolerances or anything along those lines. Uh, we're really more interested in how to actually get the model created and, and not really the drafting side of it just yet. If you look at our isometric view, that's kind of what we're intending on going for our final product tonight we're also going to add a little bit of material and we're going to check our uh, properties on there and hopefully they they all match up with one another um, with this orthographic representation we're looking at this and straight on views so we have our top view here front view and then our right side view is a little bit different than what you've seen in the past we've actually got a section view so if we took a hacksaw and sawed down the middle of this particular part, our eyeballs would be looking at this section on this left-hand side. So when we flip our view over here to the right-hand side, everywhere you see these section lines, um, that's where our little hacksaw actually cut material. Now you can see this feature here and this feature, they actually don't have any hash marks in it or, or section lines in it because they weren't really touched because there's a hole that runs through the center of this and there's a little spot face or a counter bore up here on the top that we're going to create. Uh, we're going to do this thing in baby steps. So we want to do it um, in three different levels on our extrusion. Uh, our first level is going to be 3 eighths of an inch or 0.375 tall. If you look here, this is our length of our rectangle that we have. And this is our width of our rectangle. So we're going to have a 4 inch by 2.5 inch rectangle. And we're going to extrude this thing up 0.375 tall. Then our next level would be this shaft right here. We're looking for a dimension on the shaft and we also need to know what the height of that particular shaft is. So our height of the shaft is one and three eighths from this bottom surface here, but we've got a dimension here of 0.375 and it looks like we're gonna just extrude this out. Um, we hate to really do math on our own because if you uh, give us opportunity, we're gonna mess that up. So we're just gonna type in 1.375 and subtract 0.375 should be one, but we're gonna verify that later in the model. Um, the diameter of this particular shaft, we really don't know what the diameter until we actually look at the dimension. If you come to this right side view, notice we have a diameter symbol on here. So when you look at a shaft straight on to it, it actually looks rectangular or square because all you can really see is the outer edges of it. So this is gonna be a one and a quarter inch diameter circle that we extrude out one inch from the surface when we create that portion of it. The next thing that we're going to do is this uh, feature at the very top. We're going to start on the top of this shaft that we've uh, just created. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit more math. It's going to be 1.625 minus the 1.375 because it's going to be this distance here. I think that's a quarter of an inch, but we'll verify that with our um, calculations when we're inside of the model. Um, the diameter of that, we notice that it is a diameter because it's got the diameter symbol here. Uh, so it's going to be two inches and I believe it's a quarter of an inch thick. So in our extrusions, we've got three levels. So one level, second level, and our third level. Now, as far as removing material, we come over here to this sectioned out view again. Um, we can start either one of these uh, diameters that, that we want to. And in this case, I think we should start with our three quarters of an inch uh, diameter that goes all the way through. So we're gonna draw a circle on the very top or the bottom, either one, um, and we'll cut it all the way through. And that way we'll never have to think about it again because it'll always go through if we even change the size on it. Uh, lastly, as far as our cuts go, we wanna create this inch and a half diameter spot face up here at the very top, just so it would allow facilitation of, of a fastener sitting on it or, or whatever we wanna put in there, maybe a washer. Um, so that that's going to be the last cut that we have. Now I want to introduce you to a couple of new things that you haven't seen in classes of yet. If you look at this right here, these are little radiuses on here. Um, they're called a fillet and we're going to add them on with a feature command inside of the model. Um, we could do this with a sketch. Uh, it's usually a little more difficult and I also like to put these on at the very end of the model. Um, just in case somebody wants to do some machining and you need to turn them on or turn them off. Sometimes they can become problematic if you're in the 
in the middle of your model, you know, when it become complicated and you actually have to make a change to it. If you've referenced them somewhere else, they, they may become problematic. So another reason for reason why I like to put them at the very end of it. Um, the last feature that we'll be going over in this lesson is uh, we're going to have chamfer commands. Uh, so we got it in two different places. So as we look at this top view, we're going to want it on the top left corner, top right corner. Uh, this chamfer is actually going to be 3 eighths of an inch by 45 degrees. So I think with that, we're going to get started. So let's start with a uh, 4 inch by 2 and a half inch rectangle. And I believe we're going to start on the top plane. So we've already gone over file creation, file saving. So we want to make sure that we create a new part. Um, you can do that a couple different ways. Um, you can even do a control new or this icon or file new. Uh, we want to make sure that we're in part and OK. With that being said, we got our modeling space and I want to come up here to the top left corner and I want to select extruded boss base. Um, so it always is going to give me this hint over here, select a plane for which you want to start. In this case, I want to come over to the top plane, turns orange, and with the left mouse click, select it. Um, it rotates the orientation around where we're going to be drawing normal to the top plane and our primary shape was a rectangle. So in this case, I want to come up and just select our icon. Um, drop your chevron down first. Just make sure that you are grabbing the center rectangle. There's no telling what the last one was. So center rectangle, move your mouse pointer out. You have your pencil with your rectangle symbol on it. So I want to come down and tickle over the uh, origin. Now my coincident symbol is showing up. So one mouse click, I'm going to hold my mouse point, my left mouse down. And I let go and I'm now I've drawn a rectangle out here I can hit escape a few times and terminate that or I can move on to the next thing that I want to do and in this case I'm going to come up to smart dimension I don't have to drop the chevron down I can just pick the, the command move my mouse pointer out notice that it has a dimension symbol on it I'm going to come pick this top line as soon as it turns orange one mouse click pull it up second mouse click and I believe it was four inches, not 40. So four, and then I'm still in the dimensioning command. My two vertical lines have turned black because they are oriented based on from our center point out. So we know that they can't move. So this one should be two inches from here, two inches from here. Now we just need a height on this. I'm gonna pull it out, place it down, and this is gonna be 2.5. And we know that by looking at our drawing right here. So we have four and two and a half. All right, click out in paper space. Um, so my dimensions are black, my sketch is black. That gives me a, the idea that I'm fully defined. I come to the bottom right hand corner and I take a look in this area and it is fully defined. So I'm confident about exiting my sketch. So when I exit my sketch, it's automatically going to put me back into the feature that I had selected. So we'd selected extruded ball space. Um, in this case, we want to go uh, with a blind dimension and that height on that was 0.375. So it looks like um, it looks pretty close to what we were looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. So now we actually have a model that we that we can do something with. Uh, notice that we have all of our other features up on the top ribbon that we could select, but in this case, we're still in our extrusion mode. So I want to select extruded boss base again. I look to the left, it's going to ask us what plane or planar face or edge. In this case, I want to pick a planar face, which is going to be this top surface that we did, top surface of the extrusion that we did. So one mouse click, um, our defaults should be set up to kick to uh, move around normal to you, I want to come up and grab a center rectangle. I'm sorry, a center circle. Uh, move my mouse pointer out and sure enough, it is a circle by center. I come to the origin, one mouse click, pull it out, a second mouse click. And now I want a smart dimension. If memory serves me, I believe this was 1.25. Um, notice we got like a linear dimension or this uh, leader type dimension. Either one is going to give you the diameter. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one. It's just a per preference for what, whichever one you want. Um, I think it's 1.25, not 2.5. So let's just double check ourselves because 
we always want to make sure that we double check and triple check if we have any doubts and it is 1.25 so dimensions black sketch is black bottom right hand corner fully defined I'm now exiting the sketch now this area turns yellowish um, with that being said I can't really you know being new to modeling I want to make sure that I can see what direction everything is going as well so I'm going to rotate it around you know you take your middle scroll wheel press down on it and move your mouse and that should rotate your model you just got to play around with that to kind of get the hang of where it's going to be uh, where it's going to go so we look back at our, our drawing. Remember, we've already extruded out 0.375, so we have this much material, but we need this much material in total. So from this top surface, that would be this 1.375 minus 0.375. So over here, let's just do our math in this, this area here. So 1.375 minus 0.375 should be 1, and it is looks good so I'm happy with that I'm going to accept the command with our green check and now we're ready to move on to our next feature um, our next feature is going to be this little boss feature up on the very top of it it's going to be two inches in diameter it's also going to be on top of our 1.375 so it can't just add the 1.625 to it or it'd be really tall so it's going to be 1.625 minus 1.375 so we want to create another extruded boss base. It's going to ask us what plane. Um, this is actually a plane, so even though it's round, it still has three points where we can actually pick a plane, create a plane. I'm going to come grab a circle by center again, move my mouse pointer out to the point of origin, one mouse click, second mouse click, and now I want to create a smart dimension of that circle and it is going to be 2. Click out in the paper space somewhere, modeling space somewhere. Uh, so we have 2 inches. That's that circle. We're fully defined. I'm happy with that. I exit the sketch. This is now yellow. So we want to make sure that our dimension is actually correct. Remember the last extrusion that we had was 1, so it kept that in the cache. So we want to come over here, we'll move select it, and that was 1.625 minus 1.375, and I think it's a quarter of an inch, and it is. So we're happy with that, and we select our green check. So now we have all three levels of our model. Um, so let's just take a look at it in the isometric. Sometimes when you're new to modeling, you get, caught, you get hung up, you think that it all ought to be done at one time, but there's several steps in it. You know, as you get more fluent with modeling, you can you can combine some steps, but right now we're just in still in the baby step mode. So we look at our drawing that we're going by, and we actually have a three-quarter inch diameter hole that goes all the way through our part. So we go back to our model and we want to create an extruded cut. Uh, it's going to ask us what plane or planar face. I want this very top surface that we've uh, just created. I pick it, it kicks around normal to us. I want to a circle by center. Notice my mouse pointer has a circle. Hover over the triad, one click. And then I want a smart dimension. Pick the circle, not just anywhere inside of it, and that is 0.75. Click out in the modeling space. Dimensions black, circle is black fully defined we can now move forward I exit the sketch remember we selected extruded cut so I had a little graphics card issue it's kind of showing um, so I don't really want it to go a quarter inch deep I want it to go through everything and I know that my part is 1.625 so I could put that in there but in this case I want to let the computer think for me from this point forward I just want to go through all um, so if we change the height of any one of these, it's, it's going to make sure that that hole goes through everything. So we want to accept that. And now I'm going to take my middle scroll wheel, press down and rotate it around. It looks as if we have a hole through the middle of it. Let's go with a control seven. And what that does is it puts it back in isometric. You could also change your view, your view um, by coming up here and hovering over 
one of these icons. You can look at the front view, top views, or any of that. Um, just try to get in the habit of just knowing a few shortcuts. You don't, you'll probably never remember all the shortcuts, but a few of them will help you. The ones that you're going to use those. And so we're now looking at this in an isometric view. Uh, we still have one item that we've got to do as far as a cut and that's going to be this little spot face or counter bore here so if we roll down here you can kind of look in this pictorial view how it's it's got a little step down in it and so our step down is a, an eighth of an inch or 0.125 and it has a diameter of 1.5 so we go back to our model we also want to create a cut i pick the top surface it orients or i mean or orients normal to our drawing view, come grab a circle by center, on the point of origin, click, pull down, let go, smart dimension, pick the circle itself, move out here anywhere, place it down, 1.5, click out in the modeling space somewhere, our dimension black, sketch is black, says we're fully defined, happy with that. Exit the sketch, take a middle scroll key and roll it around. Now, mine has a dimension of a quarter inch in here. It's too much. So I also want to go blind because I know it's a spe specific depth. So I come and click on this and that's going to be 0.125. Enter. It gives me the preview. That is what I want. So I can accept this command and we now have a spot face or a counter bore in here that we could set a washer in it or a bolt all the way through or, or something along those lines so everyone hit control seven all right so we now have this isometric view and we're going to move on to a command that you haven't seen as of yet um, so these are fillets or rounds corner rounds um, called a number of different things in a number of different programs in this one we're going to be calling that a fillet command and we got a quarter inch diameter so that's what we're going to move to next. <clears throat> so if you have it oriented like this, it's pretty easy to select these two edges. All right, so if we'll come up, you can drop your chevron down here. So we have fillet and chamfer command in this. Um, in this case, we want to fill it. I want to look over here to the left. And I want to go ahead and set my dimension before I, I pick my radius. And we said it was 0.25. Um, there's all sorts of different types of fillets. We'll get into those a little bit later on. So we want a quarter of an inch. I want to pick this edge and this edge. Notice when they turn orange, that's when I'm going to use my left mouse selection button and select it. So we want to go ahead and accept that. And now we kind of rotate it around and take a look. Does it look closer to what we have? I do believe so. So we have those. So now we go back to our model and we want to put these 3 8 chamfers on here. So same type of feature, um, but let's let's just do a control 7. Um, while you're new, let's rotate this thing around to where we can see the back edge. Okay, so up here where the fillet command is, if you'll drop the chevron down and we want to pick a chamfer, um, our chamfer the distance or the value was supposed to be 0.375 and it is 45 degrees same thing we want to pick this this edge and this edge it gives us the preview or if it doesn't give you the preview make sure that you have full preview selected over in your uh, feature manager tree or design tree and then if you're happy with that go ahead and accept it now we want to control 7 and that is our isometric view we want to look at our isometric view here and we look really good with that so I'm happy with it make sure that you save your part as the uh, prescribed name um, now we discussed also discussed that we're going to be adding material a specific material so over here in the tree itself notice it says material and mine says not specified I want to come to material and this is one of the few areas where you actually have to right click to get the command to uh, work so we want to right click the very top one is edit material 
and mine defaults to steel and it's opened up. Um, I'm going to minimize this for just a moment. So there's all sorts of different uh, types of materials that you can use here. In this case, we want to use steel. I'm going to drop it down or expand it and I want to select AISI 304 and then I want to hit apply and after you apply it then you're going to have to close it. You can create materials and you can do all sorts of things with this. So now notice the color of it actually changed a little bit but that's not the reason why I wanted it to change. I actually want to know what this thing would weigh if it was made out of stainless steel. So I come up here to uh, one of our windows tabs and I'll select evaluate and right above evaluate is mass properties. So this will tell us what our part, the part density is, the part mass, the part volume, and the part surface area itself. So 0.29 pounds per cubic inch says 1.39 pounds is what the part would actually weigh. So there's a volume of 4.82. Um, we could just verify this um, with calculating it out. So if we have 4.82, Eight two cubic inches and we multiply it by 0.29 pounds per cubic inch we got 1.397 so we got 1.39 pounds so I was pretty sure that their math was correct but we just want I kind of wanted to show you where that came from uh, if we have all of that done correctly make sure that you save it and we can upload that to our learning management system